Welcome back to Let's Code, I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we're gonna to talk about this flashing image on the right here. Now, the setup for this is that we've been working with Nanu. Nanu has uh, served us pretty well, but also the further we get into Perlin noise and simplex noise and animating simplex noise and things like that, the further we get into, okay, well, the performance requirements here seem like we're going to need to use shaders because the way that we're using the noise is taking X, Y positions, which are all independent. There's no state involved. And then asking the noise algorithm, Hey, what should we render here? So on the right hand side with that knowledge, what we have is a cube that is mapped to a mesh and texture of just an image that I use with the Rust Adventure uh, project. And this image is mapped on each side of the cube. So you can't see the cube itself, but each of the faces has, or each of the faces we can see anyway, because the back faces of the cube we can't see. Each of the faces we can see are processed by a shader and then applied to the cube. Now the blinking is controlled from Rust. It's changing values that we're passing to the shader. And the reason this looks noisy is because we are also using the shader to apply a set of noise to the alpha value of the image that we're putting onto this cube. Now that's quite a bit to take in. So let's make that a little smaller and we can start talking about the code here. This is a bevy project, uh, a bevy project that uses WGPU shader. So on the right hand side here, you can see our file layout. We've got our source main.rs. We've got a custom material.wgsl and we've got rustadventure.png. The rustadventure.png apparently is not going to work because VS Code doesn't like me right now, uh, but it looks like that <laughs> on the right. You've already seen it. And then the WGSL is shader code. So we'll go over a little bit about this. I've written also an additional library to uh, power these imports so that I don't have to copy and paste the Perlin noise code over and over into different uh, WGPU stuff or WGSL shaders. Keep saying WGPU. Which brings us to the actual uh, Bevy game program app, whatever you want to call it. We have, of course, the default plugins here. And then this Shader Utils plugin, which is the thing that I wrote that powers the uh, WGSL imports. We add a custom material here using the material plugin. We have a setup system and a system to change the color. The change color system is the system that is flashing this uh, sort of every, I think it's two seconds maybe every second. Uh, yeah, every second sounds, that sounds right. So in our setup, this is a startup system, we've got commands, uh, we've got access to all of our mesh assets, Ac uh, custom material is a struct that we've created. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the asset server is a typical bevy uh, construct, we insert two bundles here, we insert, we insert a 3d camera bundle, so we can see the cube with a transform and a direction. And then up here, we insert a material mesh bundle, which is the 3D cube in our scene. Now the cube is a mesh that's created from a basically one unit cube with a transform that puts it roughly at the center of our scene. And then we get to the really interesting part for the shaders. We add a material here to the materials assets uh, database. And we use this custom material, which is just a rust struct that we've created. It's nothing special. We pass in a color, in this case, blue, we pass in a texture or a color texture. In this case, we're asking the asset server to load in the Rust Adventure PNG that we see on the right there. And then we set the alpha blend mode to blend, which doesn't really matter for the purposes of what we're talking about. The change color system is something that we, we can go over right now. So um, we query for all of the assets that are custom materials in the assets database, uh, and we get those as mutable resources. We iterate over them. In this case, we only have one, so I just iterated over it. And we set the color uh, based on how many seconds have elapsed since startup. So this is why I said two seconds and then corrected to one, because it's actually every second. So every one, two, three, four kind of thing. Uh, we change the color that this material is passing to the shader. It's not the color that is the cube color. It is the color that we are passing to the shader, which then does additional processing. So we've got bisque for one of them, which you can see is the lighter one. And we've got dark gray for the other for just a bit of a difference. And this is really cool because this means that we can interact with our shaders without having to manually deal with any input buffers or anything like that. But we just get to set up uh, a field on a struct that we can change using typical bevy mechanics. Now, this is the really 
interesting part for our custom material struct, right? So we've say we've got this uh, uniform value that is a color, and then we've got this color texture, which is a texture and a sampler. These I'm a little bit not concrete on. I know that uh, these correspond directly to, if we look at the WGSL, the numbers for uniform zero, texture one, and sampler two correspond directly to these bindings, zero, one, and two. So zero is the material, and you see it's also uniform. So the words also correspond to WGSL constructs. This is a texture, and this is a sampler. We'll continue with that in a second, though. Um, we've got a UUID here because Bevy does some type reflection stuff, and this is the easiest way to support that. So there's not much actual setup code here. We basically just say, hey, there's a shader over there. These are the values that we want to pass to our shader when it's executing. Uh, and then we insert the struct into the Bevy's world. Now, this material trait is something that's super important. Uh, it's not got a lot going on in it, but we can do fragment shaders, vertex shaders, compute shaders here. And if we don't define a function for our custom material uh, on this trait implementation, we get the defaults, which are basically don't do anything. So we use shaders custom material .wgsl, which is the file we were just looking at as our fragment shader, which you can think of if you're if you're not familiar with shaders, fragment shaders are kind of color shaders. So we've been working with Perlin noise quite a bit uh, from the bevy shader utils crate. I'm importing the Perlin noise 3D function. You can see on the right here that the bevy shader utils is actually also a set of WGSL scripts that I've uh, included. And then we use a couple of, you know, WGSL syntaxy things uh, to define these bindings. We get the material for the custom material. These look so much like Rust types that this should feel fairly familiar for anybody that's writing Rust. So we've got a VEC4 of F32s, for example, a VEC2 of F32s, VEC3 of F32s, and so on. So in the fragment shader stage, uh, we get the UV coordinates. So basically like the X and the Y, uh, if you will. And we're expected to return a VEC4. In this case, we're returning a VEC4 for the color. Now, WGSL is a different language than Rust, so uh, I'm a little shakier on it <laughs> because I am I have a lot of experience in Rust. I do not have a lot of experience in WGSL syntax. So here we've got a input, which is the input to our Perlin noise function. So I've taken the X value of the UV coordinate and I've multiplied it by 40 because our cube is from zero to one. So I'm expecting these values to be uh, somewhere from zero to one. And I wanted to see a little bit more noise there. And then the UV coordinate for Y is the same thing. And I've set the uh, third coordinate to one. It doesn't matter really for me. Although I, so I, I guess we could probably do anything else. Like we could pass in the time here as well, which I, I'll probably do at some point. Um, I think that once we get into the animations, that'll be really interesting. I do want to continue with this example and actually move the cube so that it's facing the camera and filling the screen uh, so we can get something that looks a little bit like the 2D and 3D Perlin noise visualizations with Nanu that we've been doing, but we'll do that later. So we get this Perlin noise three function from the bevy shader utils. We pass in the VEC three and we get the noise value out. If you've been watching the Nanu videos, you know this value is from negative one to one. So we add one to it and we divide by two to get something between zero and one, which gives us an alpha value because the color values that we use in Bevy and material.color here and all these things are VEC fours from 0, .0 to 1 zero. So we take the material color that we've passed in, which is either the bisque color or the dark gray color on the right that we can see. We multiply those values by the sample of the texture at that coordinate. So we've got the color sample for a given pixel at an XY position. Uh, we're multiplying that with the color that we are passing in. And then we're also multiplying it by our custom alpha channel here. Now I've used a VEC4 because it seemed like the right thing to do. Um, and it seems to have worked more or less. <laughs> so that's how we get this uh, shader powered sort of rust driven uh, result here. Now it's not a particularly interesting result. It's not particularly artistic or anything, but it does show how we can get some uh, Perlin noise applied to a texture and rendering in a bevy scene, which for me is super exciting. I like it, it was so easy to get this set up today. Um, and like, there's, there's quite a bit for me to still learn, but it was really fun. Uh, just looking through the bevy shader examples and getting this to work. Now, 
The other thing that I want to go over is this Bevy Shader Utils lib that I've created. So this is basically just a bunch of WGSL files. So if we look at the Perlin Noise 3D, which is the one we were working with, this is uh, some copy pasted code for a WGSL version of a Perlin Noise algorithm. Uh, I did not write this from scratch. Uh, the credits are up here and also in the readme, but it provides this Perlin Noise 3 function that we were using in our custom material, right, right here. And it came from Bevy Shader Utils Perlin Noise 3D, but this is actually just a custom identifier uh, that I have defined here. So I wrote this load shader function. Um, I am basically bringing in all of the strings from all of these WGSL files in the shaders directory. I'm instantiating the shader utils struct here just to keep those handles around so that they don't unload. And then we get the uh, assets database for shaders and I call load shader on each one of these. Now what this does is it creates a new shader using uh, from WGSL, which is what we wrote these shaders in. And we pass in the shader string, which gives us a shader. That shader gets to have its import path set. So this is the critical piece for how you use this from another application. I've chosen to make them all bevy shader utils colon colon and then the name of the shader. So it'll be bevy shader utils varo noise 2D, something like that. Uh, we use the handle ID random uh, with the shader type argument to create a new ID. And then we set this in the database uh, of assets for our shader and we return the ID. We return the ID to keep the handle and the shader utils so that uh, the asset server doesn't unload any of these. And that's basically it. We basically implement plugin for shader utils plugin, which allows us to add the shader utils resource to the app, which triggers this from world implementation. All of it gets loaded and all we have to do in our app here is use the Shader Utils plugin, and then we can immediately start importing Betty Shader Utils, Perlin Noise, Simplex Noise, whatever we want, which I'm super excited about. This was, this was a wonderful experiment. I am uh, super excited about it. I've published uh, Betty Shader Utils to crates.io. It is not necessarily usable yet. So if you want to check it out, it's Betty Shader Utils on crates.io. Um, there's some documentation here. Uh, we don't get any WGSL syntax highlighting, so that's not fun. But the important thing to note is that if you do try to use this, you probably want to try to use it from the GitHub repo because it is tracking uh, the Bevy main release, which is where a lot of this shader functionality lives. Uh, if you want to give it a try, go give it a try. Uh, for any reason, you could just go copy the code out, run it in your own project, commit it to GitHub. It's all fairly licensed. So I am looking forward to doing more shaders, especially with my games. I want to write more shaders for my games and I want to make them look better. I want them to look pixelated, even though they're in 3D environments and things like that. So I'm super excited about that. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a little bit more technical. It was a little bit more just code uh, and the result isn't particularly artistic or exciting, uh, but I am hyped on it. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.